Put off that stuff here. Put it here, on here. There's, this is the front of the room, here. So students at the back of the room, I want you to sit here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay? So there's twelve students at the back of the room. Can you come up and sit here, please? We have to pretend, if we don't have that many students, we have to pretend the classroom is just half. We can pretend there's a wall at the back of the room. Okay? So the classroom starts from back there. So in the future, when you come to the class, you can imagine there's a wall. Do you understand wall? There's a wall at that part of the class. So you need to sit up here, here in the front. Today we're going to do some discussion questions. So this cl last class, we were talking about returns and calculating returns. <coughs> So we talked about the accounting return. Accounting return is the uh, using the return on capital. So we calculated all of the re profits and expenses and net income, and we took away the expenses and we came up with a return on capital, which was four percent. We compared the four percent to the different to the cost of capital for Disney theme parks, six percent. So we decided not to take the project. So now we're going. That was the counting way, but now we're going to learn the cash flow way. Okay. So the cash that was just if we use accounting, but we need to change accounting to cash flow to be more accurate. So we can follow in our books. We start talking about the cash flow. On the, you can also follow here. On page seventy-five. Right. So we looked the last time we looked at uh, or sorry, uh, page seventy-one. Estimating expected revenues and cash flows on page 71. So, the key to value is earning more return than the cost of capital. Okay? Uh, we have different ways of doing that. Okay? We can use this one, which is economic value added, another example, or return on capital. But we are going to use cash flow. Okay? The most widely accepted way, and in this class, the way we're going to learn is using the cash flows. So we're looking at the cash flow view of the project. So to, to get from income to cash flow, we have to add back all the non-cash charges, such as depreciation, subtracted out of the capital expenditures. So this is the money that we spent, uh, we explained the last time. We have our income. We have taxes, we have capital expenditures, depreciation. Okay, so this is the cash flow to the company. So we have plus depreciation because we took away depreciation, minus capital expenditures because we didn't count the capital expenditure, and minus the working capital. And then this tells us the cash flow. So this is important to know. Uh, because this uh, you have to do uh, to understand how to change accounting one to cash flow. So just to review, where did we get the income from? We got the income from the accounting. Okay, we found we did all of the revenues and the expenses, and we got income, <coughs> income after taxes here. Okay, so we. Here we have depreciation, expense minus depreciation. Is this a cash flow 
minus depreciation. Depreciation is not a cash flow, okay? So we have minus 50, but in fact, with cash, it wasn't minus 50. Do you understand? Yes. Cash was taken away at the start, the very start. So that's why we add back in depreciation. Okay, so we take our income here, operating income after tax, minus 31, the same line, okay? And we add back depreciation of 50 to make cash, okay? Uh, in this year, we also had minus capital expenditures of one billion, right? So if we go back up, uh, we can see that on that year, we had the uh, capital expense expenses. So, uh, in year one, we had uh, Magic Kingdom, one, th one billion, okay? That money is not included in the income statement, okay? We, in the income statement, we just have depreciation. So, we have to account for this money. Did we spend this money or not? Yes, in year one we spent this much money in cash on Magic Kingdom, one billion dollars. Does everybody understand that? But it's not shown in the income statement because income statement shows depreciation over a long period. So we have to subtract that money from our income in year one. So here we can see minus capital expenditures, minus one million. Okay? So we're doing this in cash. So the first year, we spent this much in cash, so we have to add it in here. Then change in working capital. Uh, our change in working capital is getting bigger. So that's more cash we're spending, so it's a negative number. So the last class, we talked about working capital, okay? Non-cash working capital. So let's say that in Disney, the first year, we have 100,000 of stock. Do you understand stock? Right? Working capital is stock that we need to keep. We, we have to keep in storage because we're going to sell it later. Let's say the Disney Resort, the hotel. What kind of working capital does Disney Resort have? Hotel. They have like towels, those kind of things, right? Cleaning liquid. Things they need to keep in the storeroom. It's using up cash. So, that's at the start. As the, as the income goes up and the park is getting more customers, the working capital has to go up too. We need more towels in storage and more cleaning liquid. So that's going to be more. It's going to change. We can see it changes by 63 in year 3. Okay? So we need to spend 63,000 in cash for more stock. Okay? For more working capital. Stock that we're not selling but we're keeping in storage so that's a minus number so we have these three things we need to do add the depreciation take away the capital expenditure take away the change in working capital and now we have a cash flow every year first year cash flow we spent 2.5 billion minus 2.5 billion so we can see we have a lot of minuses here at the start Okay, if we look at the income statement, it's different. Income statement doesn't include the capital expenditures. So the first year, it's just minus $31 here. Okay? But if we look at the cash, year one wasn't minus $31. We spent $1 billion, so year one was minus $981,000. Okay? Can you see the difference between the cash flow and the income statement? Yes? You understand? We spend the cash, real hard money that we can see, cash flow. Income statement, we record in a different way, accounting way. Okay? So we, three, these three things we need to add back in again. So, discuss with your partner. Does depreciation have a positive or negative effect on cash flows? Thank you.
the tool. Tricky question, right? I'll give you a hint. We're talking about tax. Okay? So we talked before about the tax benefit of depreciation, right? So what do you think? Does depreciation have no effect, positive or negative effect on cash flow? So discuss with your partner. on building R, 2.5 billion, okay? So, thank you. So, if we use cash, we spend 2.5 billion in year zero, okay? And then there's no money here, okay? Minus here. If we use depreciation, we have zero in year zero, but minus 250 every year. Do you want for 10 years, okay? Do you understand? So, does that affect cash or not? What do you think? Hands up, who thinks depreciation affects the cash flow? Yes or no? So, hands up, who thinks yes, depreciation affects the cash flow? Okay, who thinks no, depreciation doesn't matter about cash flows? Okay, the answer is yes. So, the people who put up their hand for yes. Uh, is depreciation going to make higher cash flow or lower cash flow? So hands up. Depreciation makes a higher cash flow. Depreciation makes a lower cash flow. Okay, depreciation makes a higher cash flow. Because of tax. Because of tax. Okay? Because here, this is an expense. This is an expense. Okay, we have revenue. Let's say we have revenue every year of 300. Okay? 300, zero here and 300 here. Okay, then if we do A way or B way, right? A way, we have net income, A is going to be 300, 300 minus 0, 300. Okay, B is going to be 300 minus 250, 50. Okay, this is income before tax. Do you understand? Operating income before tax. Now we need to pay tax on the income. Okay, how much tax is A going to pay? Let's say the tax is 30%. Okay, A, how much is tax? Minus 90. B, how much is cash? Tax. 30% of 50. Minus 15. Okay, so A is paying 90 in tax, B is paying 15 in tax. Okay? Do you understand? So in the end, uh, this is not this is not a cash flow, right? So this is a cash. Tax is cash. Do you understand? So which one would you prefer to do in this case? A or B? You're the company. A or B? B, right? You get the tax benefit here. Okay? So just we have to understand that depreciation affects the cash flow. Depreciation can give us a higher cash flow because here 
We paid with B, we had depreciation, we just paid 15 in tax. A, no depreciation, we paid 90 in tax. So there's a 75%. Every year is a 75 plus cash flow for B. Okay. So depreciation reduces taxable income and taxes. Okay. So the benefit of depreciation, therefore the tax benefit, is written as tax benefit equals depreciation multiplied by the tax rate. So in order to do this, we just we said here that the tax benefit is 75. Okay, the difference is 75. So a simpler way is just multiply 250 multiplied by 30%, okay, is 75. So depreciation multiplied by the tax rate gives us our cash flow benefit. Okay? So if we do this for the Disney theme park, we get depreciation tax savings every year. The tax rate is 38%, like this. Okay? So we can make these propositions. The tax benefit from depreciation is higher the higher the tax rate. So if our country has a high tax rate, depreciation gives even more benefit. Okay? Uh, Non-cash charges that are not tax deductible, goodwill, have no tax, no effect on cash flow, right? So it has to be tax deductible. So depreciation is taken out before we take pay tax, it's tax deductible, so it gives us that advantage. So just briefly, we can mention again the types of depreciation. We have two main types of depreciation. They are straight line and accelerated depreciation. Okay. In straight line, it's even. If we do depreciation evenly in straight line, it's 250 every year. Okay. If we do accelerated depreciation, maybe the first year is 500. The next year is 300. Then 200. Then 100. And so on. Okay? So we can do depreciation in those two ways. In accelerated depreciation, the capital expense is depreciated more in earlier years and less in later years. This is more like real life situation. Okay? Most things, if you buy a car, your car doesn't depreciate like this. Okay? Your car depreciates a lot, loses the value a lot in the first year, almost half the value. As soon as you drive out with the new car, you already lost about 30 or 40 percent, right? And then it loses less over the next years. So assume that you make a large investment this year, and you are choosing between straight line and accelerated depreciation methods. Which one will result in a higher net income this year? So discuss with your partner, and then which one will result in a higher cash flow this year. <coughs> so let's say this year is just year one, okay? So in year one, we have this one is accelerated, 500, and this one is straight line, okay, 250, okay? So we're going to have uh, 300 minus 500, or 300 minus 250, okay? A and B. So what will A's net income be? And what will B's net income be? Here and here. Okay? For year one. Okay. This is revenue. Okay? This is depreciation. Depreciation. Okay? And then here, income. What's the income going to be? Have a think about it.
Jung So Su, Yi Jung Su, is Yi Jung Su here? Yes? What do you think about the first one? We have this one accelerated, this one straight line. Which one is going to have a higher net income? Straight line, so let's do and see, right? Revenue, A is going to be 300 minus 500, is going to be minus 200, okay? B, 300 is going to be uh, 50, minus 50, okay. plus 50, okay? So we can also, if we want, we can do the tax. Tax will be uh, no tax here, zero. It's a negative number, okay? Tax will be how much here? 15, okay? So to total will be minus 235, okay? After tax, before tax, after tax, okay? So then the second question. Which one will result in higher cash flows? Now discuss with your partner. Which one is going to give us higher cash flows? This is A and B. Tax A, tax zero. B, tax 15. Okay, uh, Kim on G. Where's Kim on G? Kim on G not here. Francesca. Uh, Artem. Uh, I think accelerated depreciation has higher cash flow. Yes, that's correct. Why? Uh, because we had 500 million plus 300 million. Like we sum up. The no, that's not the reason. Hmm? What, anybody know the reason? It's correct. The accelerated has the higher cash flow. Why? Because we spend and earn much more money than. I don't know how to explain. Yes, B has to pay 15 tax. Does A have to pay any tax? No, A doesn't have to pay any tax because it made an accounting loss. Okay, do you understand? Yeah. We make a loss, we don't have to pay any tax. So A doesn't have to pay any tax, their cash flow is higher. B has to pay 15 of tax, their cash flow is lower. Okay, so this is the, how do we report? How do we report our expenses? We are allowed to decide what year our expenses in, okay? So it depends what you prefer. If you want to have a high net income, some companies want to show a high net income because they want to show they need some new investment for the company. And they want to show people, oh, we're making a, a good profit, we're making a good net income. Then we're going to do the one with the higher income, straight line, B, okay? But if we want to get the high, we need a lot of cash now, we don't want to get a, spend a lot of cash, we want cash at the start, we don't have much cash, then maybe we'll do B, to get more cash. So it depends on the company and what they want. Do they want to show the world we have a high net income? Okay, then we choose B. Do we want to have, it looks like a higher net income, right? Do we want to have more cash now? Then we choose A, okay? Do you understand? So what we're trying to talk about here, understand, is the difference between accounting, writing the things in accounting, and hard cash. Okay? Hard cash, the cash that's coming in and coming out. And we're doing cash flow calculation by hard cash. So most companies are going to prefer A. Okay? Because in A, they, it's not just window dressing. Do you understand window dressing? A is hard cash. They're actually making a cash saving. They're paying less tax, okay? Because they didn't pay the profit. So, uh, next question. R&D is considered an operating expense by accountants. 
Is R&D a capital or operating expense, and why? So discuss with your partner. Mm -hmm. R&D is research and development. So maybe we can write that choices here. 
So, <laughs> you have the choice, it's one million, a hundred million. So you have a hundred million, either you can spend in your zero expense, okay? Or you can depreciate. Depreciate it over three years. It's going to be 33.3 million a year. Okay? One, two, three. Okay, those are your choices. Which will have a more positive effect on income? And which will have a more positive effect on cash flows? So discuss with your partner. A little bit similar to the previous question. Yeah. A is paying more tax. 
So B, yes, B is paying less tax. P has a better effect on the cash flow. Okay. So it's the opposite, right? A has the higher income, but B has the higher cash flow. So we're on the usually it's the opposite. Okay, the higher income, the more tax we pay, the worse cash, the worse effect it has on cash. Okay, so do you understand this is two ways that we can do this, right? They both end up with we have minus 100 here, okay? But they have a different result in cash, okay? If we look at the accounting value uh, here, it's going to be minus 100, minus 33, 33, 33. It's the same, right? Accounting, the numbers is the same. But the effect on cash is different because of reporting. Because in the first year, even though we have an expense of 100, we don't get any tax benefit because we didn't make any profit in here. So we don't get any tax benefit. But these guys, we get the tax benefit every year. Tax benefit, tax benefit, tax benefit, cash is higher. How much higher is cash? Cash is higher, depreciation multiplied by tax rate. 15 minus 5 is 10. Okay? 33 multiplied by the tax rate, 30%, right? Is going to be 10. 30% of 33 is 10. Okay? So, do you have any question about the capital expenditure and depreciation? Or we can move on to working capital. Well. Okay, so the working capital effect. So money invested in inventory or in accounts receivable cannot be used elsewhere. So the cash flow is less. So we're talking about inventory and accounts receivable. Inventory is like stock. Accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. We explained before. So accounts receivable, I sell the bike. Okay? The bike goes out. Okay? The bike had costs. Okay, it's gone out. But I don't have any cash. No cash. Do you understand? I spent cash costs to get the bike. And then I sold the bike. But I don't have any cash yet. Okay? It's a, I will get cash in the future, but I don't have cash right now. Cash flow is concerned with right now. Okay? So accounts receivable is included in working capital. Working capital means that my cash is tied up. Do you understand tied up? You have a tie on the top of your sweater, right? So the cash is tied up means I can't use the cash. I can't get the cash and I can't use the cash. Okay? It's in accounts receivable. I'm waiting for it to come. The other example is inventory. So if I have a bicycle store, of course I have inventory. I have a lot of bicycles in the window, right? Bicycle. A lot. I'm very good at art, as I always say, right? People come to the store. They want to see bicycles, right? They don't want to see an empty store. And you say, oh, what's that? You want a bicycle? Okay, I'll go out and get a bicycle, okay? We have to have a lot of bicycles in the shop. That's tying up my cash. Do you understand tying up my cash? Cash is tied up. That's called inventory. So the cash flow, the more inventory we have, the more cash is tied up. The more accounts receivable we have, the more cash is tied up, the less cash we have. Okay? So to the degree that some of these investments can be financed using accounts payable, the cash flow is increased. So accounts payable on the other side increases the uh, cash flow. Okay? Accounts payable, I got I got the bicycle from the supplier. The supplier gave me the bike, okay? But I didn't pay yet. I didn't pay cash yet. So I have more cash now, okay? I should have paid the cash, but I don't have to pay now. I can pay after three months. So the more we can use accounts payable, the higher cash flow, more cash flow we can use. So I can use this cash for something else. <coughs> So, 
Investments in working capital are cash outflows. Any increase in working capital reduces the cash flow in that year. Any decrease in working capital increases the cash flow in that year. Okay? So we saw with Disney, as the time went by, inventory and accounts receivable is getting higher and higher. So the, reducing the cash flow. Cash flow is getting lower. At the end of the project, we need to have a salvage value at the end of the project. Okay? Uh, so the working at the end of the project, we need to include the working capital as salvage value. Salvage value means we money we get at the end of the project from selling the buildings, selling everything. Okay? So we count this working capital as cash at the very end. We close down our bicycle shop, we make a sale, 50% off all bicycles, we sell everything, we get that's called a salvage value. Okay? Salvage is ships which are wrecked in the sea, people used to take the wood, take the parts of the ship, that's called salvage. Okay? It's not the full value, but something smaller than the full value. So if we need less working capital, we can increase the cash flow. So this is job of financial manager, right? To manage the working capital. So if I'm the financial manager and I want more cash, what do I need to do? Minimize inventory. Do you know Toyota? Toyota has a just-in-time production, right? It means that the raw materials get to their factory, they don't have any inventory. Okay? They get to the factory and immediately they manufacture. And then they don't have much stock leaving the factory. They manufacture the goods almost on the same day that it leaves the factory. Okay? That is called just-in-time production. And that minimizes the inventory, makes the inventory as low as possible. Okay? So if we can ma use a management skill to manage the business with low inventory, shops also have to do that. They have to watch the consumer's behavior and try to keep their inventory low as they can. Then uh, we can have more cash. We can get our customers to pay the bills faster and improve collection. So accounts receivable, the problem is, we're waiting for the cash. So, how can we get our customers to pay the bill faster? Do you have any idea? How can we get our customers to pay the bill more quickly? Money cash. Hmm? Money cash. Mm, they're going to pay us in cash, of course, right? But we want them to pay not after three months, but after one week or two weeks. How can we get our customers to pay more quickly? Special trade. Maybe give them some special terms, yeah. right? Uh, in Ireland, for the you know the electricity bill, the government has a draw. If you pay your electricity bill early, your name goes into a draw. You can win a holiday to Brazil, right? Maybe the CEO and his family of the electricity company go on holidays to Brazil every year, right? Maybe they win every year. I don't know, right? <laughs> But uh, anyway, people think, oh, I can win the trip to Brazil. So they pay their bills early. Okay? So we can just give some incentive to the customers to pay early. We have more cash. Then find suppliers who offer more generous credit terms. So instead of, you're a supplier, and you tell me, you have to pay after one month. And you tell me, no, you don't need to pay for six months. Okay? So I'm going to choose you. I don't need to pay cash for six months. I can hold on to my cash for longer. So that's the way that we can manage the working capital to have higher cash flow. So we're not using as, as that much cash. Okay, we, if we're using the cash, we could be investing the cash somewhere else in the business. At the minimum, we could invest the cash in the US government bond and get 2 or 3%. Okay? But probably we want to invest the cash because it costs us 6 or 7% to get the cash from investors and loans. So we don't want to be leaving that cash doing nothing. Okay? We want the cash to be invested in something or doing something. So uh, let's take a break then for 10 minutes.